Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. We are asked to assist with a crash investigation that involves a momentum analysis. Now the problem is the vehicles were loaded up and towed before the mapping took place. All we have at our scene are a couple tire marks post-impact and nothing pre-impact. The agency was good enough to laser scan the roadway a few hours later, but not the cars at rest. So we loaded up the SX-10, spit a bit of time at the tow yard, and scanned the vehicles. Now I need to determine the pre-impact angles for my laser scan data. After we come back from the break, I'm going to show you how to take this, a scan at the tow yard, to this, a matchup of the crush profiles, and finally to this, placing the vehicle scans into reveal. Enough of me talking. Let's get to work. So I have my SX-10 data loaded into Turnbull RealWorks Forensic, and what I've done is I've segmented out my two vehicles, my Buick and my Durango. Now, if you missed last week's episode on Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesday, where we took a look at segmentation in RealWorks, what it is, and how to use it effectively, uh, definitely go back and watch that. But what I've done here is I've segmented out my two vehicles. Now, what I'm going to do is with each vehicle, I'm going to export these as separate E57s. And the reason for doing that is so that when we begin moving the vehicles and pushing one vehicle into the other to determine the crush profile alignment, what it's going to do is it's going to drag everything else, all the surrounding stuff around with it. So right now, all of the surroundings are registered with the cars, so everything in the junkyard is where it needs to be. However, when I start moving the vehicles, that's also going to start moving the point clouds around them. And what it's going to do is it's going to destroy the registration for everything around. Now, that isn't a problem because what we're looking for is this data here to be aligned correctly, and we don't really care about the rest of it. However, if it does get brought up in discovery, it's going to be something that we're going to have to explain, and I don't like having to explain that. It's just going to be a lot cleaner if we do it in another project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Buick and I'm going to export my Buick. I'm going to name this as Buick.e57. Hit export. And then I'm going to export my Durango as an E57. Now what I'm going to do is close this project and start a whole new one. So I'm going to take my project here and I'm going to hit close. Do you want to save? I'll hit yes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-import my E57. So I'm going to import open. And on my file type, I'm going to change that to my E57s. I'm going to ingest both of these and click open. And now it only brought in my vehicles and nothing more. So I'm in the production tab now. I'm going to switch over to registration. We can see that we have our two vehicles. Now what I will do with my Buick, what I'm going to do is just change the color of this so it stands out just a little better. Yeah, it's a little bit dark. There we go. Those two colors stand out fairly well. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my project, which is Project 3. It's named Project 3 for me, and I'm going to do a registration. So I'm going to click on my Registration tab. I'm going to click on Cloud-Based Registration, and we have it loaded up. Where we're going to be working is in our bottom box with the two vehicles combined. And normally we would pick points and we would do a registration between two clouds. However, we're going to use the registration tool for something just a little bit different today. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click in my view tab. I'm going to start a limit box. I'm going to click somewhere right around here. I'm going to expand my limit box out so I can see both of my cars. Now what I want to do is I want to only take a thin slice through this. So I'm going to raise my bottom up somewhere around the front bumper, and I'm going to drop my top down. That's going to allow me a really good cross section of my vehicles to really get a good alignment. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make sure 
that my reference cloud is Buick, moving cloud is Durango. You can move these around, but I like to keep one of them stationary. I like to keep the Buick just because the Buick was sitting on the X axis and I've got one of them that's somewhat aligned with one of the axes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to collect my interactive pan tool and I'm going to be moving my Durango. So I'm going to be moving this one. I'm going to change my manipulator location to be somewhat in the centroid of the damage. In my view, I'm going to change to parallel just so it flattens that out just a little bit. I'm going to change over to top down view. All right, what I'm going to do now I can either use my grab handles, so I can move them this way and this way, or I can grab the plane here and move it on the X and Y plane. What I'm going to do is line up the centroid to the damage fairly close to where it needs to be. Then I'm cl going to click the interactive rotate. I'm going to rotate around until I have them roughly where we need them. And I'll click my interactive pan again. Put that right where I need it. It's going to be a good fit right about there. Now when I rotate around to the side a little bit, take a look at it. Let me shrink my limit box down just for ease of use here. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, keep in mind I do have my limit box active. Let me move this over just so we have a little bit more screen real estate here. All right, I'm going to change to perspective view. Now my limit box is still active. Drag my limit box mode dialog box over here. Now right now it's in a resize mode where I can resize my box left, right, up, down, or from my corners. However, in the next button over or the next icon over is the pan. What this allows me to do is slide my limit box up and down. So as I'm doing this, I can get a look at what I've got. So here I'm kind of on the underside of the vehicle. Right here, I'm right around the area where we had maximum engagement. And here we're into the hood and other areas where things uh, weren't crushed the way that they should be. So I think we have a pretty good damage profile alignment here. I'm liking the way that that looks, and I feel confident that that's how the vehicle struck. When I zoom in here and look, yeah, we've got good damage alignment all throughout, and we've got a little bit of spring back in here due to a plastic panel. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to close out my limit box, and I'm going to take a look at the whole thing and see what we have here. And yes, that does look pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that this does not create a group. I'm just going to keep the project tree intact the way that it is and I'm going to click apply and once that is done I'm going to click close and the registration has been applied. I want to go to true color. We'll see the vehicles crushed in. That's looking pretty good. Now what we can do is we can take screenshots here to show our solution so in our media we can do a screen capture and we can also, in our view tab, in our limit box, we can go back through and just do a real quick limit box here to take a look at it if we wanted to. Or here's another little quick tip. If I hover my mouse over in this area and I press the N key, that is N as a Nora key on my keyboard, what that'll do is that'll zoom into a specific area. Now if I press the minus key on my keyboard while holding the N key that allows me to bring in or out more points. And when I release the N key, brings everything back. Just place my cursor here. Yep, that's looking good. Our area with maximum engagement, which is our bumper, is right where it needs to be. Okay, another little tool that is going to be very helpful for us to export this out is in our production mode. I'm going to select my project cloud. And here in the home tab, 
you notice midway over there's something called cutting plane. Now what the cutting plane does is allow us to take horizontal slices, or really slices from any direction of this point cloud. However, what we want is to be horizontal. Now right now by default it's kind of got this wonky plane that's kind of on the X, Y, and Z. But if we look over on the right side, you'll notice that it has the define cutting plane normal. What we're going to do is do a Z axis slice. So if we're looking down from the top, it's going to create a slice through. So we're going to do a Z axis slice. That's going to slice it parallel with the ground. And you notice down here in the bottom is our result of our slice. So when I slide the slider down here, you'll notice that it gives us our slices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this back to cloud color. Or I'm sorry, I'm going to change it over to scan color. There we go. So we get the two different vehicles in there. I'm just going to line this up just so that things are kind of in alignment here. Now in here we can define our slices. So what I want to do is I want to do a thickness of 0.1 feet, which will be approximately an inch thick. And I want to do multiple slices at one inch intervals. So this is going to create 69 different slices for us. And when I click preview, it will give us our preview. And up in the top, it gives us multi colors to show us where each slice happens. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit create. And what this is going to do is this is going to give us a group here in our workspace. And when I click close, we can go over here to our cross cut interval. And this will give us our cross cut clouds. So what I'm going to do is do a select all. And I'm going to hide the cloud. Now from here, what I can do is I can turn on each one of these slices. So this is cut number 10 at one foot above the ground. I'm sorry, this would be 0.9 feet above the ground. This would be one foot. And if I wanted to do multiples, so that would be approximately a three inch thick slice. And what I'll do is I'll drop that just a little bit just so that I'm getting a slice that will be from 1.3 feet above the ground to 1.5 feet above the ground. Let me add the next one in. So 1.3 to 1.6 feet above the ground. And if we wanted to, in our view, we could do a top down in parallel projection, and we could just take a screenshot of this just to show what the two vehicle alignments look like. So why don't we do that in media? I'm going to just going to do a capture screen. I'll call this top down slice and click OK. And that's now captured that for use in my case packet. So now that we've got our project cloud done, our vehicles are in the orientation that I want them to be. What I want to do is I want to export this. But there's a bit of a problem. If I export this to reveal and I want to position my point cloud, it may position a grab handle clear off over here somewhere. What we want to do is create a grab handle that's kind of in the centroid of our vehicles just so that it's easy to drag around. Now with this, we're going to use the UCS or user coordinate system. So to do that, I'm going to go to my edit tab. And I'm going to click on UCS. And we're going to create a user coordinate system. Now this tool is a very powerful tool, especially if you want to align point clouds, say if you're scanning a building or some other type of structure with a wall, and you would like that wall to be along the X or Y axis, you can do that here by fitting a plane and then having that plane be on the wall and that will align the wall with your X or Y axis. However, what we're going to do is something very simple. We're just going to pick the origin. So we're going to change the center point of our cloud. That's going to give me my picking parameters. What I'm going to do is just pick a point somewhere in the center of my, just in the center of it. That looks good. I have my X, Y, and Z. That looks pretty good. And you'll notice here in my origin, it just changed the place where my origin is. I'm going to set this as my active UCS. 
Now you notice up here in the top, our coordinate system. Up until now, we've been using the home coordinate system or the coordinate system of the project itself. When we hit create, it creates something called object 70. And you'll notice down here in my bottom left, it created object 70. So UCSs are treated as objects. So now you'll notice that our object 70 is our active UCS and up here at the top is in our coordinate system is object 70. Now if we change over to home, what it will do is it will change the center point of our cloud so that it's somewhere not in here. I don't know where it is, but it's not going to be in here or even remotely close. But what this will do is this will give us a center point that's going to be in the middle of our cloud. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export my project cloud. So I'm going to click on project cloud to select it. And in my export, I'm going to export my selection and I'm going to name this aligned vehicles and hit save. Now in our export options, don't overlook this. Our export frame is object 70. What that's going to do is that's going to use this user coordinate system to establish the 000 of our E57. So now when I click export, we are done. So let's open up reveal and take a look. So I have my point cloud loaded up in reveal and we have our intersection loaded in and our tire marks are here. They're real faint, but they do go off here into the ditch. Again, this was the laser scan by the agency that initially responded to the scene. And then later on, they realized that this is going to take a little bit more than what they're comfortable with. And so they just gave me the data. So what we're going to do is we have our car cloud loaded up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import my point cloud. I'm going to import my E57. So I'm going to click browse and I'm going to do the aligned vehicles dot E57. I'm going to position the cloud coordinates equals scene coordinates and hit start import. Now, since we did our own UCS or user coordinate system, we kind of destroyed the relationship between these vehicles and the scene. And not to mention the vehicles in the scene, the relationship was destroyed anyway, since these were laser scanned at a tow yard. So if they're scanned somewhere else or you do something to the coordinate system, you don't want to import them relative. You want to import them um, relative to the scene. The problem here is I've got my cloud snap turned on, so I'll move these over. And I'll bring them up on the Z axis so the tires are on the pavement. There we go. And I'll switch over into top down to get my vehicles placed correctly on my canvas. So I'll just rotate them around. And what I'll do is with my scene evidence, I will line up where my tire marks start. And I'll line these vehicles at their point of impact. And then from here, I'm set to go to measure my angles of approach. And then again, my angles of departure and work out my momentum analysis from there. Now it is possible to place individual vehicle point clouds into reveal and conduct the alignment there. However, we do lose some of the features that Trimble RealWorks gives us to really fine tune our alignment. If you found this video to be helpful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe and leave a comment down below to let us know what you think. If you have anything that you would like to see or have questions about any of the Trimble Forensic solutions, be sure to put them in the comment section below. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week on Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesdays.